Hey all, Pioneer Field Agronomist Mike Gronsky up here in central Wisconsin, located in the greater Stratford area here today. Uh, standing in a soybean field that's at the R4 growth stage. Uh, in addition to the soybeans and myself in the field, you'll see that we also have a lot of water hemp located around me here. So uh, this particular field uh, was reached out to by the grower. Uh, this has been a traditional corn soybean rotation with wheat worked in on on occasion. Uh, last year it was in corn, there was no water hemp that was found. In addition to that, back in 16 when it was last soybeans, there were also no issues with water hemp. So as you can see, this can become a pretty overwhelming problem in a pretty short order. So as we look at the water hemp itself, probably the biggest challenge we face is often early season identification. Uh, it's not uncommon for it to be identified as pigweed. Uh, there's a couple telltale signs we can be looking at to make sure we identify this properly. First would be is looking at the plant itself and looking at the stems. So when you look at the stems themselves, you know, if you're not finding hairs on there, that's a good sign that you're looking at water hemp and not pigweed. And the other factor I'd be looking at is just the leaves themselves. And the leaves themselves and the water hemp are going to be more elongated and they're going to have a smoother, glossy appearance to it. And they're not going to have the hairs like the pigweed species will. Uh, just one other special thing that I would note there too, that as, as these populations can continue to diversify genetically, there is potential to find some water hemp with some hairs on it. So uh, be prepared for that as well. Um, and in addition to that here, you know, we look at the amount of growth that's put on. Some of these plants are already about five foot tall that are, that are standing around me here. Uh, this thing's a pretty quick grower. It's not uncommon for it to stretch out as much as an inch to two inches per day. In addition to that, it's a very prolific seeder you know, with the average plant putting out right around 250,000 seeds. And some of these bigger ones have the ability to do as many as a million seeds um, if left unattended. So the question becomes, what should we do differently for next season as we look forward to 2019? So this particular field here, the herbicide program was a two pass roundup once early post-emerge and the second was just prior to the R1 stage. Uh, at that point the glyphosate pass was made and it didn't even put a, a dent into the water hemp population that we're standing in here currently today. So as we look at things we should do differently for 2019, the first would be is incorporating the use of layered residual. So looking at putting down a pre-emergent herbicide and then we come back through and do that early post-emerge herbicide pass looking at adding in some layered residual there as well to catch any late germinating water hemp. In addition to that, adding in the use of Extend Soybeans can also offer you more flexibility on your farm. Uh, the reason I see some value there is even as we're looking at these layered residual program, there's always potential that one or two could potentially escape this. And then you can come back through and add in the addition of a Fexapan or another Dicamba labeled product over the top of your Extend Soybeans and you can eradicate any of these smaller water hemp that might have snuck through that pre-program when you're making that early post application. So with that, for any questions on properly identifying water hemp in your field or questions on building a herbicide program and managing your fields around water hemp, reach out to your local Pioneer representative. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.